Hey friends, welcome back. Thanks so much for joining us. It's my great pleasure to have back on the line James Perloff from jamesperloff.com. Of course, he's an author and a friend of SGT Report. And in fact, he can now claim being the most viewed guest, at least in terms of one video that I've ever had, and that is God is Real. If you haven't seen it, check it out. That's our last conversation. And James Perloff is back right now to take us deep inside the Rothschild, Rockefeller, Clinton Bush, New World Order. Boy, do we have a lot to talk about. How are you, James? I'm doing good. And uh, we do have a lot to talk about, uh, you know, the elections uh, pending. Uh, this, uh, as we speak, there's a, this hurricane pending. And we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, Rothschild's uh, links not only to politics, but to uh, weather control and uh, weather forecasting. Yeah, I want to play a clip for you. You've uh, you've already seen it. I sent it to you earlier this morning. Mm -hmm. and yes. That is going to propel our discussion directly into why is Hillary Clinton Rothschild's choice for president? I've been saying it for months now. We know about these $100,000 per head fundraisers held for Hillary Clinton by Lynn Forrester to Rothschild. And now we have Lynn Forrester Rothschild coming out publicly championing her puppet Hillary Clinton. Listen to this, folks. Let's talk about the upcoming election. You're an adamant Hillary supporter and a friend of hers as well. Why is she better for business? I speak about this in my private capacity, right? Because the coalition is, is nonpartisan. Okay. Um, so I personally believe that she's better because she's lived her life trying to figure out how to make life better for people who are, who are struggling. <laughs> I pause it there with a big question mark saying, huh? She's better for people who struggle? Like what, James? The Haitian people for which billions of dollars were donated after that Haitian earthquake uh, to the Clinton Foundation and those billions of dollars are missing? All right, so let's get this straight. Lady Rothschild loves Hillary and says Trump has gamed the system his entire life and says Hillary is better for business. James, my question would be, whose business is she talking about? Central bankers' business? International criminal banking business? <laughs> because Hillary means no Glass-Steagall, no prosecutions for criminal bankers, and right. no rule of law. That must surely be why Hillary is better for business, according to Lady Rothschild. Uh, she can't be better for business uh, because you just look at the legacy of the Obama administration with its uh, trillion-dollar deficits, uh, skyrocketing inflation despite you know, the recent artificial drop in oil prices um, year by year. You know, we've, we've seen it go up uh, eight, nine percent real prices. We're talking about um, a, enormous job losses overseas. I mean, that is to say jobs going going overseas, kids graduating from college with uh, six figure debts, living at home, ha about half of them are living at home. Um, uh, more people uh, out of work than ever before. So how is that good for the economy? How is that good for business? And how does uh, uh, Lady Rothschild not know that? By the way, one thing I picked up from this uh, link you gave me on that uh, brand new uh, interview with Lady Rothschild is that she and her husband, Evelyn de Rothschild, actually honeymooned at the White House when the Clintons were in there as uh, president and first lady. So that's an, another indicator of just how close this association is. Yeah, and uh, I often make the mistake, James, that listeners to this program are well aware of what a central bank is. And I just make the leap that people must know that if Rothschild is championing Hillary, then you know Hillary's bad because the Rothschilds uh, have decades and, in fact, centuries of criminality in taking nation states to war uh, as part of their history. And the Federal Reserve, guys, is privately owned. And one of the founding families and owners of the Federal Reserve, the Central Bank of the United States, is the Rothschild family. James, if Rothschild loves Hillary, if, if the Rothschilds are friends with the Clintons, what message should that send the American people? Don't vote for Hillary. And uh, by the way, I was making this point uh, that she was the Rothschild choice uh, early this year. I wrote an article on the uh, uh, 2016 elections uh, uh, called Do Our uh, Votes Really Matter? And uh, I pointed out the number of uh, coincidings between Hillary's agenda and the Rothschild agenda. And it actually, Sean, it's 100%. She is... Um, First of all, she's pro-war on terror, okay? She's going to clamp down more on civil rights. She's, uh, you know, uh, pro-APAC, pro-Israel. Um, she's a war hawk. She um, 
is, uh, of course, she's uh, pro-gun control. She's pro-GMO. In fact, she hired a Monsanto lobbyist named Jerry Crawford to work on her campaign. Uh, she's pro-population control, meaning, you know, she's pro-abortion and pro-vaccines, etc. She's pro-climate change control. And, you know, the whole environmental thing is uh, with uh, carbon footprints and so forth as an excuse to regulate our lives yeah, agenda, on an environmental pretext. Agenda 21, Agenda 2030, agenda they're going to strip 20, us yeah, of our yeah. rights to have energy that's affordable, thereby, thereby uh, turning us into serfs. It's all part of this UN agenda backed mm -hmm. by the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers. And I just I interject here so that people understand these are the people behind the propaganda. George Soros, race war, mm -hmm. uh, refugees, uh, open borders, destroying Europe, destroying the United States, uh, destroying the sovereignty of nations, all in service of central banks. And you uh, add some uh, some more uh, fuel to the fire, which is that she is pro-UN, which is uh, world government. And uh, you mentioned the refugees. As you know, um, the, uh, the Soros people are very much behind this uh, horrible immigration crisis which uh, is tearing apart Europe, and Hillary is uh, totally for uh, more uh, refugees coming in here, which could only divide our nation and, and bring it more chaos, uh, more rioting. Um, she's also come out in favor of internet censorship, and of course she's in favor of the whole transgender thing that Obama's been pushing, and she, uh, until the election, was pro-TPP, uh, pushing for that, calling it the gold standard. So I can't find a single thing where she differs from the Rothschilds and George Soros and the globalists, what they want. Now, Trump, on the other hand, you know, I was never a Trump fan from uh, the get-go. Um, you know, I was a big Ron Paul fan. He had fought against the Federal Reserve uh, throughout his, uh, you know, three decades in, in, in the Congress. You know, I knew where he stood. Uh, but uh, at least Trump is against uh, the mass, the, the insane mass immigration. At least he says he's uh, pro-Second Amendment and he's pro-jobs, and that makes him unacceptable. And so there are other clues, by the way, that indicate that Hillary is the bank's choice. One, of course, is Wall Street donations. You know, uh, there was analysis done when, you know, when a lot of other people were in the pack, like Cruz and Rubio, there was analysis done, and, and, and Bernie Sanders, right, to see who was getting the most money from Wall Street. And uh, uh, Hillary was number one. Now, Jeb Bush was possibly... Uh, in competition for that, but of course he dropped out. So that left Hillary all alone, way ahead of the pack uh, in terms of who Wall Street is supporting. So uh, do you really believe her when she says she's going to uh, uh, support the middle class and not Wall Street and the one percenters? Um, another thing is, um, you know, this whole thing about her being a senator and then a secretary of state, this is all a setup. This appears to be part of a um, can, uh, agreement was reached uh, the, between her and Obama uh, and the powers that be that Obama would be the first black president, she'd be the first woman president, and when you've got a black or woman as president, the public thinks that the powers that be are not really ruling, they think the minorities have a voice, right? Um, except it's the wrong, wrong minority members. But um, she really accomplished nothing as a uh, senator or as a secretary of state except for corruption, and this really got me Sean, this is really a clue as to the establishment being behind her. When she left the Secretary of State position, CBS uh, then began running a weekly TV drama on Sunday nights called Madam Secretary about a blonde female Secretary of State. Now, uh, it's obviously supposed to be Hillary Clinton. I mean, who else could it be? And on the TV show, she's portrayed as beautiful, honest, competent, and caring about the American people. So that that's like free publicity at a top dollar that she gets every week on network television. Um, but of course, we also know another uh, clue that she's trusted by the establishment is the fact that she and Bill already have had two terms in the White House uh, while they were hosting the Rothschilds for their honeymoon. Um, but what really uh, kind of stands out just recently, Sean, is that they're pulling out all the stops. Now, George Bush Sr. has come out and said he's going to vote for Hillary. And, you know, Sean, I don't think I can recall the time when a ex-president said he was going to vote for the other party. I think that might be a first. Um, I could be wrong about that. But it shows how desperate they are at the, at the populist support that Trump's garnering. But the other one, of course, is uh, that the Rothschilds themselves 
have come out behind from behind their their usual um, um, covering. Uh, and uh, as you point out, uh, Lady Rothschild, uh, Lynn Forrester de Rothschild, Evelyn's uh, wife, has now uh, gone on Yahoo Financial to give an interview giving this uh, wholehearted support to Hillary Clinton for president. So there is no question that she is the choice of the Wall Street Rothschild establishment. Yeah, well done, James. And uh, you and I are in line with our thinking on this issue across the board. And first of all, I want to say my thanks to Small Gold a buddy of ours out there in YouTube land who sent me that link to the mm -hmm. Yahoo Finance page of that interview. And uh, right. it yeah, made right. my jaw drop because I agree with you. I think it's really wild that the Rothschilds are essentially coming out from behind the curtain to publicly support their puppet. And again, there's no better example of what we're talking about, this new world order exposed, than as you just cited, and I've cited many times in recent weeks, Bush Sr., saying that he's going to vote for Hillary Clinton. Well, who created the Clintons? The Bushes, CIA drug running in Mena, Arkansas. Mm -hmm. Arkansas, Bush, right. Bush was the former director of the CIA, folks. I mean, come on. Who are who created these intelligence agencies? Go back to Alan Dulles, the Dulles brothers. We're talking about Wall, we're talking about big banker money, folks. The bankers run the world. And here's the problem. As we're having this conversation, James, Putin, Vladimir Putin, is prepping 40 million Russians for war, right? He's got bunkers ready for his populace, at least a large portion of his populace. Whereas in this nation, there are no steps being taken to protect American citizens from the war drums being beaten by the State Department. And it is getting so frightening because of what's going on in Syria and John Kerry choosing to cut diplomatic ties with Russia over Syria, that our friend Cliff High, founder of the WebBots Report, just released a video called A Rant Against the Coming Nuclear War. I want to play this soundbite for you because this all ties in to what we were just talking about. Why the Rothschilds and the Bushes support the Clintons. It's because these controllers are getting very, very desperate. Here's Cliff High. They're desperate to take us to war. Let me remind everyone again that there's never been world war other than when we've had central banks and central banks need war to purge both the population and the uh, memory such that they can start their Ponzi schemes all over again. This is a well-known cycle. They do this. They do this time and time again. James, as you and I have recounted in previous interviews and you've written about, all wars are essentially banker wars and just about every war we've ever been in as a nation has been fostered and implemented via a false flag operation or event of some sort. And here we go again, this time over Syria. I mean, is Syria really worth a nuclear exchange with the Russians, James? Uh, obviously not, and uh, there is uh, definitely a pattern. Now, you and I did a, a show on false flags, and we covered uh, we covered the main Tampico, the Lusitania, the foreknowledge of Pearl Harbor. We, we talked about the artificially created uh, Korean War. We talked about Tonkin Gulf and Vietnam. We talked, I we might have touched on the USS Liberty, which is an attempted false flag to get us into war. Can I tell you something uh, funny? I mean, just yeah. jump in. You didn't know this. The audience doesn't know this. And it doesn't matter. I don't care. I do this because I love it. But YouTube mm -hmm. demonetized that video, calling it advertiser unfriendly. So <laughs> it was monetized for about two I, I, hours. And then YouTube said, no, 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 no. We, you're not getting advertising on this. We don't want you talking about false flag terror. <laughs> That's interesting. Well, uh, if uh, some of their advertisers are central banks, I imagine that uh, it was advertiser uh, unfriendly. Well, and but, I should yeah, say. So we about, went all the way through 9-11 yeah. and you know, Sarin Gas and uh, the non-existent WMDs in that particular interview. And there is, in fact, a uh, pattern to world wars. Um, you know, the first world war. Uh, in the Federal Reserve was created right uh, six months before Archduke Ferdinand's assassination. Of course, World War II created the um, World Bank and IMF. Uh, you had the uh, League of Nations coming out of World War One, the first uh, attempt at a world government, and the World War II producing the UN. Uh, you had, um, uh, of course, a tremendous war profiteering in both cases. You had, of course, from the Zionist perspective, World War One generating. Uh, the Balfour Declaration and uh, World War II generating the state of Israel, which is, you know, it's a Rothschild proxy state. We won't get into that now, but this is part of the, the purposes of these wars. Um, we also had communism. The first communist state was created by 
uh, World War One the, the, with the Bolshevik Revolution, and of course communism spread over half the globe with World War Two. So you can imagine where a third world war would take us. It would take us to a, a bank for the whole world, a currency for the whole world, a real world government for the whole world, um, and a police state uh, for the for the world. Because uh, both those world wars, by the way, generated. Uh, uh, limitation on civil rights. In 1917, uh, we had the um, Espionage and Sedition Acts, which seriously suppressed civil liberties. And of course, World War II, we had uh, the Great Sedition Trial. In 9-11, we got the Patriot Act. You can only imagine what another world war would bring in terms of uh, FEMA camps and suppression of civil liberties. So it's, there's a definite pattern, and the same people are behind it. Yeah, okay. Well, now here's what I've been saying lately now, James. Uh, this nation, this government, Washington, D.C., instead of acting like the world's preeminent superpower ruled by justice and having rule of law, instead of that, Washington, D.C. is now acting like a cornered rat, and it's these banksters. And I know that when a rat gets cornered, it'll do anything to escape, and we're seeing these people now do the most overtly, blatantly criminal things, which includes the CIA, Mockingbird mainstream media. You <clears throat> recently wrote an article called, Was the Holt Moderated Presidential Debate Rigged for Clinton? And we're going to talk about that in a second, guys, because I think evidence would suggest she was given the questions prior to the debate and many more other nefarious things took place during that debate. But before we get there, I want to bridge, uh, I want to bridge over with just one more clip from Cliff High just to get your impressions. Because, again, this government is acting like a cornered rat. And why is that? Here's Cliff. Was the economic uh, implosion of the Western dollar empire going to occur before the elites could try and pull off yet another world war. Three in their current series, by the way. This would be World War Three, Unless you count the Cold War as a, the global war, and I don't really, I'm talking about hot wars here, and uh, this is what the Russians are very much afraid of, is that, you know, once they install uh, Hillary Clinton or her double or her CGI representation in the <laughs> office, then they're free to do as they want, they think, relative to the military and, and what's going to occur. All right, I'll pause it there. The only reason I wanted to play that, James, is because uh, Clinton in the White House for four more years gives these banksters in the military-industrial complex license to do whatever they want, including more of the same. So, again, no rule of law, no bankers go to prison, the crimes continue unabated, she can stack the DOJ and the FBI, and she can do whatever she wants, and nobody will go to prison as long as they're friends of hers. That's where we stand, on the precipice, and uh, these people appear to want to take us into World War III. And meanwhile, James, as you well know, we have the CIA, Mockingbird, mainstream media helping her. So let's talk about your most recent article. Uh, was that debate as rigged as it appears to have been? Uh, one thing I just want to mention um uh, for our audiences, we're actually taping this prior to the second debate, and we don't, I imagine by the time most people hear our interview today, that we're, we're taping today, that uh, the second debate may be over or about to begin. I'm not sure when you'll have it on up on YouTube, but um, I just want to make sure we're just talking about the first debate, but the first debate, uh, I did uh, post an article that's gotten a lot of hits, and um, it's called... Uh, was the whole moderated uh, presidential debate rigged for Clinton? And I started out with five reasons and I've expanded it to seven. And I have to really thank the YouTubers and people on Twitter who have linked to YouTubers for discovering all this. I just decided that it, was, it would be a good idea to kind of uh, assemble it into some kind of order and together so people could see just how rigged that debate was. And the first evidence, somebody very smartly put up a video that simply consists of Lester Holt's remarks just his remarks. And uh, when you watch it, it's very clear how hostile he is to Trump and not to Clinton. Um, he attacked Trump over his taxes. He attacked Trump over being a birther. He attacked Trump for, uh, he said, supporting the Iraq war. Well, not mentioning there was Hillary who voted for it in the Senate. And when Trump mentioned uh, stop and frisk, he disagreed with him on that. Now, if you watch his comments, now this is an unedited video. It's just his comments. There's no, it's, uh, there's no uh, commentary. It just shows what Lester Holt said. Lester Holt never once disagreed with Hillary, never once uh, challenged Hillary on anything she'd ever done, was never even slightly disagreeable towards Hillary. So he really does himself, and the video speaks for itself. But um, let me just mention some of the things he could have brought up to Hillary. 
Um, he could have brought up her health issues, which we all know about, her stumbling into the to the uh, limousine with a lot of assistance or help needing help upstairs. And when her eyes don't focus, one eye is going one way and another the other, and that's certainly not pneumonia. Um, also, of course, the Clinton Foundation uh, with its uh, pay for play, you know, Saudi Arabia giving uh, the Clinton Foundation $10 million and then getting double the arms from, from the U.S. To, uh, for, uh, when she was uh, Secretary of State. And, of course, there was a scandal with stealing the, the primaries from Bernie, uh, for which uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz had to uh, step down over. And then there were the deleted emails. There was uh, her perjury before Congress when she said she hadn't sent sent any classified emails on her private server. But even the FBI director, Comey, who let her off the hook, said there were a lot of classified stuff she was sending. So she committed perjury. That could have been brought up. Or the deleted emails themselves. Or uh, Benghazi. Or uh, how about those Goldman Sachs, quote-unquote, speaker's fees, which, you know, in earlier decades, I think they would have called those bribes, Sean. Yeah, pay, uh, how about lying? Pay, about Pay for play, my favorite uh, politically correct term for bribery. And by the way, she won't release the transcripts uh, to yes. those Goldman Sachs speeches. God forbid we know what she told them. Right. Um, and by the way, you made a great point that uh, there would be no bank or prosecutions. That may have something to do with the fact that she wasn't prosecuted. She has debts that she's got IOUs now. She's not going to prosecute anybody now that they've let her off the hook for her crimes. But uh, Lester Holt could have also brought up um, her uh, claim about being dead broke when she left the White House, when she actually put down, I think it was 85000 on a brand new house. Uh, the whole Clinton body count. Now, whether you believe that or not, it's from Vince Foster to Seth Rich. Anybody who's gotten in the way of the Clintons has a way of uh, disappearing uh, at an early age and uh, certainly enough to raise questions about. And how about Bill's uh, sexual misdeeds and all the cover-up she's uh, been involved in with that? You go back to the Clinton administration, you had Filegate when the Clintons used uh, confidential FBI files to get information about their enemies or Chinagate when they took uh, bribes from... Um, this goes. This is Clinton Foundation. Like they took uh, bribes from Chinese businessmen in return for uh, favorable deals for China by the Clinton administration. Or you have Travelgate, Whitewater scandal, um, her cattle futures profits. Lester Holt could have mentioned any of that, but he didn't mention a single thing. And if he says he wasn't aware of that stuff. He's not qualified to be a newsman. Yeah, he'd be incompetent if he didn't know about it. Of course he knew about it. And again, we shout from the rooftops. It's why SGT mm. Report exists. It's why right. Zero Hedge exists. It's why InfoWars exists. It's mm. why JamesPerloff.com exists. Because CNN, MSNBC, throw Fox News in there, ABC TV News, they are mockingbird mainstream media organizations. And you're going to love this, James. Instead of, uh, instead of Holt, in that debate, or CNN talking about the Clinton Foundation crimes and the billions of dollars missing from the Haitian people, the billions of dollars that were donated on behalf of the Haitian people to the Clinton Foundation, uh, less than 2% of which I think has gone to the Haitian people, uh, according to the former president of the Haitian Senate, who spoke with uh, Donald Trump and pleaded to him to ask Hillary in the next debate to mm -hmm. provide the audit of where all that money went. Instead of CNN focusing on that, they have a story that ran in mid-September called Trump hasn't donated to his own charity since 2008. I mean, they have to like they have to dig so deep to try to find uh, dirt <laughs> on Trump. And then when they find just a little bit of something that's a little off, they'll go they'll do an hour on it on CNN. But they won't touch the Clinton Foundation crime. Why? Because she's a mafia boss. This nation is run by mafia bo uh, mafioso at this point, bankster mafioso. And she's one of the made men or women. That's right. And uh, another thing that uh, ties in, uh, you know, he was attacking um, uh, Trump over his taxes. Another thing, he could have actually, Holt could have brought up the fact that the on their own tax returns, the Clintons donated a million dollars to the Clinton Foundation, which is another way of saying they gave it to themselves and got a million dollar tax deduction on that. So these were all avoided. By the way, I want to mention something. Uh, that's what I was saying. We're taping this before the second debate. If Holt was smart, he would have asked Hillary one tough question so that he could have said, look, I was impartial. I asked her a tough question. I have a feeling that they've learned from their lessons, and I have a feeling that this next debate, some tough question will be asked of Hillary, but they will pre-feed it to her, and she'll be ready with a, uh, an answer she's rehearsed a uh, hundred times to discredit it. But um, 
the fact that uh, Holt did not ask a single uh, challenging re uh, question of, of Hillary Clinton surely shows uh, mainstream media's mockingbird bias. Can I just quickly summarize the other six things about the Holt debate? Um, do yep, we have time please. for that? Yeah, absolutely. That, please do. Well, uh, let me just summarize them quickly, and you'll find these in my article on my uh, on my blog, jamesperloff.com. But uh, the other six are uh, Hillary had a uh, podium that was different from Trump's. She had a bright rectangular light in front of her, and it turned off at the end of the debate. Trump did not have that. We don't know what it was, but a pretty good guess is that it was a teleprompter. Um, Hillary was also wired. Her earring had a little earpiece that went into her, and on her back, she's actually had a box under her clothing with a cable that went up to her head. Now, that could have been a medical device to suppress seizures, but she clearly was wired for sound. That's three. Number four, and Gary Franchi picked up on this on his YouTube uh, uh, podcast, um, in violation of debate rules, federal debate rules, Lester Holt also had an earpiece. They are not supposed to have that. So it's quite possible that whoever was talking to Hillary was talking to Holt, and that might explain why they were so coordinated. Number five is what you just mentioned. Hillary was doing this. Whenever uh, Trump said something she wanted to make a point about, she would do this, and then uh, Holt would throw it to her, and you could tell that she would then say something that uh, corresponded to the time she did this when Trump was speaking. So you could, these are the poker signals. Um, number six, there was this strange dude who met Hillary on the way in, this guy with white hair and glasses, he was holding some kind of information. And at the end of the debate, when uh, the two uh, contestants left their podiums, this guy with white hair rushes up to Hillary, this is all on video, you can see it on, on it's embedded on my, my uh, post. He rushes up to Hillary's uh, podium, grabs this folder of information, tucks it under his shoulder, and he waits until Lester Holt stands up, and then he goes up to Lester Holt like this with a folder, making eye contact with Lester Holt. Now, you lose the image at that point, but it appears that there was also hard copy being passed back and forth between uh, Holt and Clinton. We don't know what it was, but a good guess might be it could have been uh, advanced knowledge of the questions. We're not sure. But the last thing was um, Mark Dice did something on this, but... Uh, it was this the sniffling that Trump was supposedly doing, and immediately the mass media had headlines, Trump sniffling during debate, and um, uh, it was immediately implied that he was a cocaine user, and of course, that's going to hurt you in the polls if people think you snort cocaine. Well, it turns out that he had a defective audio system. The debate commission has admitted that, and uh, Mark Dice points out, that when you've got a body mic on, they can... <laughs> They can turn up the sound on that, make your breathing very loud. It sounds like you're a loud breather. But, of course, as you pointed out, they always want to counter the charges against Hillary. Now, she's been, it's been mentioned she's got pneumonia. So if you make it sound like uh, Trump's got some issue with his breathing, that helps to uh, counterbalance the charges against her. But that's, that is a total of seven things in the whole debate that were rigged. And how come it's always Hillary's opponents that have things go wrong. How come all the coin tosses in Iowa went against Bernie Sanders, never won against Hillary? How come she never gets the bad mic? But that's kind of it on hold. We'll go on to the Rothschilds, but I just wanted to make sure people know that it, there were quite a few things in that debate that uh, make it very um, uh, preponderantly obvious that uh, the debate was rigged in a setup. Yeah, the deck is stacked. All right, guys, moving on to this next topic, which also includes the Rothschilds and weather, of all things. Those of you who are familiar with SGT Report and our research over time know well of geoengineering, the work of Dane Wigington, etc. Uh, geoengineering, weather manipulation, uh, and the Rothschilds' role in it. James, as it pertains to the Rothschilds and their control of weather and weather technologies and weather communication systems, why is it important that we talk about the implications of weather control plus weather broadcasting uh, as it pertains to the Rothschilds and, and potentially derivatives markets? Yes, uh, it was really my friend Rachel McIntosh, who you've interviewed. Uh, she was uh, formerly with one of America's top six uh, defense contractors. She uh, uh, was uh, very dismayed by the corruption she saw in the Pentagon and the, the private defense industry, and she's now become a best-selling author. And... Um, you know, she gave birth to twins, was very concerned about America's future and became a Ron Paul delegate um, where she learned 
uh, is actually in politics. She learned about um, the political aspects of weather control. I do have an article um, on my website uh, called uh, Are the Rothschild Elite Banking on the Weather? We, we all know about the population control uh, issues associated with geoengineering. That We know that the elite, you look at the quotes from people like Robert McNamara and the big new Brzezinski and Prince Philip and um, Ted Turner, you know, they're talking about reducing world population by 95%. And we know that if you, you destroy a, a town or a city with a, with a tornado, uh, people will um, just say it's God's will, whereas if you destroy it with a bomb, people will say who dropped the bomb. So it's a very um, high-tech method of population reduction. And perhaps also, uh, we, we're, 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 uh, we're taping this uh, Hurricane uh, Matthews is getting away. It's also uh, a way of mass evacuating people into federal camps. Uh, we've got to watch out for that. But there are two things I cover here that are not generally acknowledged that Rachel tipped me off to. One is the weather derivatives. The other is the use of weather control to affect elections. So let me just mention the weather derivatives. I mean, you, you're a finance guy. I'm not. But I know that you must talk about futures and gold futures a lot. And, of course, if people buy options on futures, they can make a bundle. We know that Hillary Clinton made $100,000 on a $1,000 investment over time in the cattle futures market. And if you're in the federal, uh, you know, close to the Federal Reserve and you knew that the Fed was going to start shorting gold, you could be still be selling gold now at $1,900 an ounce because you bought futures options to sell it at those prices. Um, so, uh, but there's also this strange thing called weather derivatives. And I honestly, if it wasn't for the fact that the Rothschilds got into the weather business, I wouldn't have paid attention to this. But there's a billion dollar weather derivatives business. And I'm not a finance guy. So on my, my article, I have a guy from Bloomberg. I got a clip there from him explaining. It's a short three minute clip. But um, you can actually invest in weather futures. You can you can bet on what the temperature is going to be. They call it CDDs, cooling degree uh, days. You can bet on whether there's going to be snowfall or uh, dry weather. And... Um, uh, this is a billion dollar market. Now, here's the thing. If you are ge geoengineering the weather, then you know what the weather's going to do and you're going to make uh, a vast fortune there. And of course, there are other futures markets that are dependent on the weather too, like corn futures. And since we have Matthew um, threatening Florida right now, let me mention that when Katrina hit Florida um, a few years ago, when uh, that was 2005, the price of orange juice futures went from 90 cents a pound to $1.98 a pound. Now, if you were close to geoengineering and you knew Katrina was going to hit, you could buy um, an option to purchase orange juice at 90 cents a pound and then be turning around and selling it at $1.98 a pound and instantly doubling your money. Um, so, uh, but what really bothered me was that um, they were buying up the weather forecasting industry, and uh, you've, you've, you've played this clip, in, uh, but it's on my, uh, my article on the Rothschilds and the weather, where it's Evelyn Rothschild, who we've already mentioned today, Evelyn Rothschild is boasting of his new investment in Weather Central, which is self-described as, quote, the, the world's leading provider of interactive weather graphics and data services for television and web and the mobile. Now, um, they provide the weather modeling the Weather Channel provides the broadcasting, but the Weather Channel is co-owned by um, the Blackstone Group, where Evelyn's cousin Jacob Rothschild is on the advisory board. And now they've cons they eventually consolidated these two together. The uh, uh, Weather Central became part of uh, Weather Systems International, which is part of the Weather uh, Channel conglomerate. So they're all t it's like a monopoly. They, you know, Rothschilds always form monopolies. So if you've got a monopoly on weather modeling, weather forecasting, and weather control, you have the potential to make billions. But to make billions, Sean, I just want to mention, you've always got to have a sucker who's going to sell or buy at the right time. And just to exemplify what I mean, let's take a famous example from Rothschild history. Uh, in 1815, uh, a lot of your viewers probably heard this, in 1815, of course, uh, Napoleon was defeated at Waterloo, but the Rothschilds always had advanced information. And on the London Exchange, they spread a rumor that Wellington had been defeated by Napoleon at Waterloo. This caused the London Stock Exchange to totally crash. The Rothschilds then went in, bought up stocks on penny a, pennies on a pound, and they actually 20x their London holdings by doing that. Now, here's the thing. They had to have suckers who would sell at any price. 
to do that. Now, how do you get suckers to buy and sell at the wrong time? Well, how does the average person who doesn't is not in on weather engineering and geoengineering, how do you get them to sell and buy at the wrong time in the weather's derivatives market? They're going to listen to the Weather Channel, which they own. <laughs> so, um, by giving people bad forecasts, and by the way, I don't know if, how it is for you, Sean, but up here in New England, the weather forecasting has been getting worse. I'll give you one quick example. Uh, this year, 2016, March 18th, we had a northeaster come in. The weather forecast on Thursday was sunny. Friday, they were predicting a huge northeaster, and New England Cable News Network was saying, we're definitely going to get hit by the storm. Make no mistake about it, folks. It's just a matter of how much snow. The next morning, Saturday, I tuned in to see how much snow I was going to have to deal with. And the chagrined uh, weather forecaster was now saying, we'll get zero snow. The southeast, the uh, southeastern tip of New England might get a dusting. Then that afternoon, my wife said, you know, my friends at church told me we're going to get hit with a snowstorm. And I said, ah, nah, that's the old forecast. No, I tuned it in. They changed it again. Now we're going to get blitz with another blizzard. And we did get six or seven inches. And uh, they can't even predict the weather up here 24 hours in advance accurately. They won't be inaccurate all the time. But the, uh, I think due to partly due to geoengineering, changing the direction of storms, and also due to the banks to control of weather forecasting, uh, we now have a situation where the elite can make huge profits in the weather derivatives markets and the related futures markets. We are the number one provider of broadcast weather graphic solutions in the country. I mean, you had this downpour, I believe, in the last 24 hours, which has caused even people losing their lives and uh, situations like this. With the detail that we can put up through the technology that we give to the various weather stations, uh, this makes people more aware of it. On the whole, it's a question of giving the opportunity. I mean, we have also launched uh, our, our, an operation called My Weather, uh, which gains access to the first truly personalized weather application for the web and mobile devices. You can go up on myweather.com and you can find out within a kilometer of where you are uh, what is going to happen to the weather. It also gives a 10-day forecast. There's uh, one other aspect of this uh, weather control I wanted to mention, which is its impact on elections. Uh, my friend Rachel McIntosh was a delegate to the 2012 GOP convention down in Tampa. And on the very first night, uh, Ron Paul was supposed to give a speech. And uh, he got cut out of that speech because the Weather Channel had forecast that a hurricane was coming to Florida, Hurricane Isaac. And... Uh, as it turned out, uh, there was no hurricane, just a brisk rainstorm. But he got cut out of that that speech. And not only that, but the Republican Party elite were able to meet uh, and come up with a plan to get rid of Ron Paul entirely. And the plan was they decided to change the rules at the last minute of the convention. Ron Paul had won enough primaries and caucuses to qualify for a floor nomination. But uh, they made a rules change to increase the number of required primaries and caucuses won from five to eight. Now, uh, my friend uh, Rachel and her fellow Ron Paul delegates found that their hotels were on the outskirts of Tampa and their buses arrived late the, on the day of the vote on this rules change and her bus driver actually got lost on the way to the convention center. So that rules change got passed essentially without the rule, Ron Paul people being there. But here's the main point I want to make. The Weather Channel, which made this faux predic prediction of a uh, hurricane that didn't happen, I said one of the owners was, was uh, the Blackstone Group. Another of its three co-owners is Bain Capital. Now, who was the chairman and CEO, founding chairman and CEO of Bain Capital? It was none other than Mitt Romney, yep. who was the beneficiary of uh, Ron Paul's being wiped out of that convention. Ron Paul uh, got wiped out. And, of course, it was made to appear that Mitt Romney was the uh, unanimous choice of the Republican Party. But I just want to stress that his company, Bain Capital, co-owned the Weather Channel. And that was not the only time that uh, Mitt Romney had benefited from a bad Weather Channel prediction. I'm going to quote from uh, an article online by Janet, excuse me, Jarrett Glenn. It's called, How the Republican Party Stole the Nomination from Ron Paul. Quote, Ben Swan reported on shenanigans in Maine. Even though only 84% of the votes have been counted, state GOP chairman Charlie Webster declared Romney the winner over Paul by less than 200 votes. Hancock and Washington counties hadn't voted yet. 
because Webster canceled the caucuses due to an impending snowstorm, promising they could vote later and their votes would be counted. The snowstorm never occurred. And he later reneged on his promise telling voters in those counties their votes would not be counted after all. Washington County was Paul's strongest in the state in 2008, unquote. So uh, as a result of another false prediction by the Mitt Romney Bain Capital owned Weather Channel, Mitt Romney won a, not, won a primary. So the weather can be used to impact elections. And I just want to mention how this might play out in the 2016 elections. Suppose you had a, a big mid, Midwestern state that was a swing state. And uh, let's say that people in the eastern part of the state favored Hillary and voters polled in the western part of the state favored Donald Trump. You could have a weather phenomena like massive flooding in the western part of the state that would keep the Trump voters at home. Well, the, maybe the people in the eastern part of the state will only get mild rain. They would get to go and vote for Hillary and Hillary would take the state. And as you know, it's winner take all when it comes to the... Uh, to the uh, to the uh, popular votes um, in uh, the elections, so um, in the in the in the presidential elections, so it's quite possible that weather could be used, could be modified to swing the election for Hillary. I don't know that they'll will resort to that. They've got all of the tricks up their sleeves, such as uh, you know controlling uh, electronic voting and vote counting, but it's quite possible. Uh, that such a phenomenon could take place. And by the way, they wouldn't actually need an actual storm, as was seen with uh, Mitt Romney. All they would need would be the threat of a storm, like a tornado watch uh, on the western part of the state to keep the voters at home. And then, you know, at uh, 8 o'clock when the polls close, the governor could look at his watch and say, well, the Weather Channel has announced that the, uh, the tornado watch is over. People can go out now. But of course, the vote would be over and Hillary would have taken the state and maybe the country. Well, James, I think this has been a fascinating conversation. And, uh, you know, as we wrap up, of course, guys, you can check out all of James' books, many of which we've already interviewed him about, including that viral conversation called God is Real. Uh, you can check out James' books at jamesperloff.com. James, do you want to shout out any of the other articles you've written? There's tremendous articles there that you've written as well. Anything recent that you'd want to call to the audience's attention? Uh, one is um, uh, I did a book review of... Uh Atomic Bomb Secrets by David Dionisi. It's the only book review I've ever done on my website because this book had so much unique information. I learned from it, you know, this is about the atomic bombs being used on Japan in World War II. And one thing I'd not known was that Nagasaki was targeted because Nagasaki was the Christian center of Japan. As a matter of fact, uh, although Truman said that the target for Nagasaki was the harbor and its military use, um, the fact is that the plane that dropped that bomb overflew the harbor by three miles and it dropped the what they call the fat man bomb over the largest Christian cathedral in all of Asia, uh, Yurakami Cathedral. Um, there were 50,000 Christians living in Nagasaki. Uh, they were destroyed. Of course, the emperor was forced to renounce his divinity. There were certain uh, forces, Luciferian forces that did not want Christianity to move in and fill that void. There's a lot more I could say about it, but that's uh, on my website. Another recent one was, um, it's called 1948, Harry Truman, The Nakba, and the Mystery of the Best Picture Oscar. And there was an incredibly boring movie made that won the best picture. It's called Gentleman's Agreement. And I was always mystified why that won the best picture. Now I know why. It was to um, soften up the public for Harry Truman's uh, instantaneous recognition of Israel two months later, uh, helped along by a $2 million bribe from the founder of APAC. And that $2 million bribe, by the way, that information comes from pre former President John F. Kennedy. I've also had uh, a couple of recent articles, The War Wars on Christianity, Parts 1 and Part 2. Part 1 is about how the Rockefellers funded the modernist movement. Part 2 is about how the uh, Rothschilds funded the uh, Christian Zionist movement. Um, and I've also got uh, recent articles on the American Revolution, part one and part two. Part two is on who really wrote the Declaration of Independence. It was not Thomas Jefferson. Part one is about the Battle of Lexington of 1775. I think I'm the only author that's ever vetted that as uh, a false flag. But let me just tell you, I grew up in Lexington. And I walked by the battle green every day. So I've always had special interest in that. So that's some of the... Uh, uh, more unique articles uh, you'll find on my website. There's quite a few more, but of course my main work in recent years has been my book, uh, Truth is the Lonely Warrior, which is a primer 
for skeptics on the New World Order. It talks about the Council on Foreign Relations, the Fed, false flags, uh, media control, Freemasonry, a full chapter on 9-11, a chapter on the Vietnam War, uh, vaccines, weather control. It's a full picture of the New World Order to share with people. Um, so I, buy, I don't ask for donations on my website, but if you'd like to buy that uh, book, uh, that may help someone you know. Yeah, fantastic. Is the best way for people to buy that book uh, through your website? Uh, but that yes, but that'll uh, that'll click them right through to Amazon. Amazon is a place to buy it. It's print on demand. Okay. Well, I want you to make some money, not Amazon. So <laughs> that's why I was asking. Okay. Well, you know what? I should say, you know, for the audience, guys, you know, that conversation that went viral between uh, between James and I called "God Is Real" uh, talks about uh, Darwinian theory of evolution and why the elite don't want you to know that there's much, much more to the story than that 150-year-old, 200-year-old science, quote-unquote science. And, uh, you know, James, I didn't know that about Nagasaki. And just just real briefly, I know we're trying to wrap up here. Um, Hiroshima was where the first bomb was dropped, correct? Yes. And, uh, and, and DNA, that, DNAC, the author of this book, has great insights. People are distracted by that. The real target was Nagasaki. Hiroshima people, is what people think of when they think of the atomic bombs, but the real target was reserved for Nagasaki, which, by the way, had expelled all Freemasons in 1926. Don't forget that the 33rd President of the United States, Harry Truman, who approved of that bomb, was the 33rd degree Freemason. There's a lot you'll find in that book review, and especially in Dionysi's book. Yeah, the reason I bring it up is because my understanding uh, of that event was that the Japanese government was ready to surrender. They were, yes. they were done after Hiroshima. There was no need, no need to drop that bomb on Nagasaki, and I did not know this about the Christian element, but it makes 100% sense uh, to me, as you and I have discussed spiritual warfare and the fact mm -hmm. that there are satanic uh, demons really in charge at the very top running these governments and uh, I think it's very very disturbing as I'm saying this guys I'm gonna play video of a nuclear test in which I swear at least through my eyes you can see a demon head sort of explode uh, come into view as the weapon explodes and I saw many of the same things on 9-11 maybe I'll play some of those mm -hmm. video clips here as well uh, demonic imagery faces seem to manifest themselves sometimes in these explosions and it may be a stretch guys but uh, I did not know that about Nagasaki and the fact that they targeted Christians, James, is just beyond the pale. Well, you brought up a point about the demons, and this is something that Dionysi uh, agrees with you on. He points out that many of these things, whether we're talking about Dresden or Nagasaki, he mentions the fact that, you know, in those old uh, altar sacrifices to Satan, where they would uh, sacrifice a body, the people committing the sacrifice thought they were drawing power from the person they were killing. These Mass bombings are like a mass burnt offering to Satan. Uh, it's the same thing as those altar offerings to Satan, except on a mass scale. And by the way, uh, he's got a book on 9-11 that makes the same point, that there's a sort of a burnt offering taking place. And uh, sometimes we need to look beyond the purely geopolitical oil and national security objectives and see that there is this Luciferian agenda, this spiritual element to this evil that's taking place, that's for sure. Yeah, and uh, guys, most of you know this about 9-11, but the fact that the official story is 100% implausible, look at World Trade Center 7, look at the fact that the BBC mm -hmm. reported on the collapse of that building 20 minutes early, which is absolutely impossible without foreknowledge. It mm -hmm. proves that 9-11 was a false flag event, and if it was a false flag event, it means that the powers that be knew they were going to take down those buildings with people inside them. What does that say to you about their spiritual belief system? Guys, this is the type of information you can only get from a truth teller as profoundly talented and open as James Perloff. Visit his site, jamesperloff.com. Our guest has been the one, the only author, James Perloff. Thanks, James. Thank you, Sean. It's my absolute pleasure. And guys, if you've stuck with us this long, thank you for sharing and liking this video with others. We appreciate your support at sgtreport.com. And check us out at thephaser.com and thelibertymill.com as well. Have a wonderful week ahead. God bless.